x-axis, we can rewrite the integral as the integral from a to b of m, which is m of x, y, but in this case, m of x, y, lower of x, dx, plus the integral from b to a. Note the direction. One is a to b, the other is b to a. That's because they are moving in a different direction. So the integral plus the integral from b to a of m of x, y, upper of x, dx, dx. It's a lot to dig in. So yes, yes, I did write these down and I will show them for you. <laughs> Because we have one integral that's a to b and the other one that's b to a, we can do a little sneaky thing in math where we just change that second one, b to a, we flip it from a to b and make that baby negative. That's all we have to do. It's not a big deal. So once we do that, we can kind of group that, those two integrals together and make it into one integral. So that integral then becomes the negative integral from a to b of m of x and then y upper of x minus m of x y lower of x dx. So all I did was pair it together and then I, instead of subtracting where it has the y lower minus the y upper, I switched the two and then added the negative behind the integral to make it all, I don't know, to make it nicer. So to make this a little cleaner, we can actually do a double integral. So that's what we're going to do. So this guy now becomes the negative integral from a to b of the integral from y lower to y upper of the partial derivative of m with respect to y dy dx. Or to make this even simpler, we could just say that it is the negative double integral over the entire region C of the partial derivative of m with respect to y dA, so over the entire area. And yeah, so that's the first case. The second case is very, very, very similar to this first one. So case two is where the interval C is simple in X. So it's horizontally simple, meaning that the top and the bottom are just straight across and then the left and the right ones are kind of the wavy ones. They're the non-simple ones, basically. This, this changes a little bit of the format. So instead of a Y upper and a Y lower with respect to X, X is actually now dependent on Y on the left and the right. So we're going to label those XL of Y and XR of Y for X left and X right. That's just a way to do it. Uh, it's just kind of easy to, it's easier to see in your head. So the next thing we do is write out our integral. So we have the integral of this region C of n dy. And again, we can break it up into its smaller parts. So the integral over c1 plus the integral over c2 plus the integral over c3 plus the integral over c4. And yeah, it's very similar, but instead of the integral of c1 and c3 being zero, it's now going to be the integrals of c2 and c over C2 and C4 being zero because they're simple in those areas now. So what we're left with is the integral over C1 of NDY plus the integral over C3 of NDY. So again, we can write this just like we wrote in case one where we're left with the integral from A to B of n of x r of y y dy yes plus the integral from b to a of n of x l so the left x of y y dy <laughs> it's a lot isn't it it's a lot of math but for those of you that get it 
those of you that don't, that's totally okay. Like, you don't have to. Just Again, we can do that sneaky little thing where we have one that's an integral from A to B and then one that's an integral from B to A. So we're going to switch that one from B to A again and just do A to B and stick that minus sign in there instead or make it negative and then group them together, group them together. So now we're left with the integral from A to B of N of the right X of Y, Y minus N of the left X of Y, Y, DY. It's a lot, yeah. And you probably heard my cat just now meowing in the back, but that's okay. I'm just going to keep her in because it's funny. And so to make it cleaner, we can scoop that baby all up and put that guy in a double integral as well. So this guy becomes the integral from A to B of the integral from the left X to the right X of the partial derivative of N with respect to X of XY dx dy and then to simplify that we could just say that it is the integral of the double integral over the entire interval of c of the partial derivative of n with respect to x da so over the entire area all right so we got through the major cases the ones that are like a lot yeah. So let's go through case three now. Case three is where the interval of C is simple in both X, X and Y. Okay, let's do this. So we've got symbol everywhere, so it just looks like a box, and it's still going counterclockwise, right? And we still have C1, C2, C3, C4. Everything's simple. Cool. So we're going to start with the closed integral over C of MDX plus NDY. And because there's addition in this integral, we can break it up into two different integrals, like we did with the other two cases. So what we have now is it's all equal to the closed integral over C of N dx plus the closed integral over C of N dy of N dy. Well, we already got those guys' integrals. We know what they equal from case one and case two. So we're just going to do a substitution here, substitution here, and we get the negative double integral over the entire interval C of the partial derivative of M with respect to Y dA plus the double integral over the whole interval C of the partial derivative of N with respect to X dA over the entire area. And because they're all over the same double integral, so it's all over the same interval, we can squish those two intervals together and so it ends up equaling the double integral over the interval C of the partial derivative of N with respect to X minus the partial derivative of M with respect to Y dA, which is kind of what we were going for. So there we go. All right. So we finally made it to case number four, case number four, and that is our general case, our general case. So for this case, I have a little thing uh, in the XY plane. It's just this region, just a wonky region. It doesn't even matter what shape it is because this is our general case. So we just drew out a little figure. And so we're going to say, consider C as the boundary of a region R. Okay, so we've got our region R and our C as its boundary, right? So what we can do is actually break up that region into little sections with 
straight lines on certain sides, okay? You kind of see where I'm getting at here, yeah? So, we're going to divide it into little sections, and we're going to pick a region. It doesn't matter which region. I just labeled a random one, but we're going to pick a region and make it R sub I, meaning it's just, you know, one of the regions of the many that are in there. We're going to let C sub I be a boundary of R sub I. We're going to let C sub I be a boundary of R sub I, meaning each one of those sections could be R sub I with the boundary of C sub I, but it doesn't matter which one because it's general. Okay, so in this case, we are going to start with the closed integral over the C of f dot dr. So that guy is equal to basically the sum of its parts, the sum of its parts. So we have a little summation in there. So it's equal to the summation from 1 to n. It depends on how many sections there are. It could be multiple. But from section 1 all the way to whatever section we have of the integral of c sub i. So that little boundary within the bigger boundary of c sub i of f dot dr. Based on our cases previously, we can kind of look at these individual boundary sections, boundaries within the boundary, as using Green's theorem. So that's what we're going to do. So that guy becomes the summation of from 1 to n over the interval of c sub i, um, which is the smaller section of the partial derivative of n with respect to x minus the partial derivative of m with respect to y over the area, so dA. And because it's the sum of its parts, we can go back and turn it into the whole big one. So it becomes the double integral over the entire interval c of the partial derivative of n with respect to x minus the partial derivative of m with respect to y dA over the entire area. So the closed integral over c of f dot dr is equal to the double integral over the interval c of the partial derivative of n with respect to x minus the partial derivative of m with respect to y dA over the entire area. That's how we get Green's theorem. So, through these cases, we were able to.